we've come out to near Long Ashton on this beautiful sunshiny morning with Matthew Pennington, head chef from the Epicurean, to have a chat about autumn foraging and seasonal, seasonal foraging. It's an unusually sunny September, but we can call it autumn now. We're sort of yes, heading yeah. into the middle of September. What, what are the main foods that people who wanted to come out and have a look for themselves could expect to find? We'll certainly find all the hedgerow uh, fruits, berries, nuts, and so on and so forth down here. Possibly a couple of um, field herbs. Um, yeah, we'll see what, see what we find, really. While we're here, will you tell us a little bit about how you guys use foraging at the Epicurean and how that informs your menu there? We develop the menu based on what is around at the time, so it suits us and it's you know, ideal for us to go and take a um, look at foraged items because it gives us a whole other range of store cupboard foods. Do you find that it means you're introducing ingredients onto your plates that customers are perhaps unfamiliar with, that they don't know or they, they don't recognise? Yeah, absolutely. But hopefully in that, within that process, they'll be able to go out then and recognise the same thing when they go out on their next autumn awesome walk. So I've brought you to this field because it's... Um, it's an essentially um, pasture land with um, cows on it and sometimes sheep up here. Um, and quite often in places like that you'll get the uh, coprinus mushroom. And there we go, look, there is a shaggy ink cat. So, really good example. It's got this fluffy exterior to it and it's got still got this really golden brown top to it. And it's known as the shaggy ink cap or the lawyer's wig sometimes. The mushroom itself is actually the fruiting body of the mycelial network. Now the mycelial network runs all the way under, across the ground um, and its main role is to digest plant matter and uh, vegetation that's died and, base, and free up those nutrients for the living grasses and uh, plants to feed on again. We really see how fundamental these mycelial networks or bacteria and fungi are, are to, the, to, the, to the functioning of, of our ecosystems. Exactly. Um, it's one of the reasons I think we need to be quite concerned about the use of herbicides and fungicides applied liberally in our open spaces because they actively break down those networks when in yeah. fact they're vital to healthy living soils. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Having mushrooms on a site usually indicates that the soil is healthy. On the side of the hill here we've got a couple of really important plants. Um, we've got a rose and over this side we've got hawthorn and uh, hawthorn's long established as, a, as a, a really important tree in British nature. This bush is particularly good because it's got really decent sized berries on it. Um, you can harvest as many of these as you like, pop them in the freezer um, and you can pull them out to make you know, sauces and, and gels and, and chutneys. In the first year in which we um, took on the restaurant we were entered um, the space in October and pretty quickly that year we realised that the following year <laughs> we're going to have to find ways of preserving, pickling, fermenting, dehydrating, um, preserving in any way we can just to tide us over through, through winter, so especially into the period sort of uh, March, April time really. Uh, and I mean that's what food security is all about really isn't it? It's about making use of the abundance around you when it's available to ensure that you have a level of security and something to fall back on when times are hard. Here's a hygrocyte family of mushrooms. Okay. Quite a complex of family of mushrooms. Yeah. Not for the not for the beginner, yeah. certainly. These aren't edible. The only way you can truly tell what the mushroom is is by um, comparing it in a guide and also taking a spore print. Well we're just gonna go through this little uh, wooded area across to another hillside which has got a meadow at the top. But um, even in this little wooded area if you look up uh, well, actually, firstly, you see on the ground that there's the odd um, nut shells and what have you. Um, we've got some English hazel and some cobnut trees here. Slows. Have a taste. 
wow. They touch. Oh, they strip the moisture out of your mouth in seconds. Whilst you wouldn't necessarily enjoy eating them raw, you really can take them home and pop them in some vodka with some, you know, some, some other herbs and a bit of sugar yeah. and, and just leave it to sit and, and it transforms into something delicious. Elderberries. Oh, they're nice and dry as well now. And what would you use these for? You can you can ferment these and um, you can make an elder, elderberry wine, elderberry vinegars. Nice. Yeah, I mean it's quite late in the year now for them, so they, as I say, they're kind of go, trying to go dry and raisiny, but yeah. yeah, still an important plant. Yeah, what we've got here is one of the. Uh, a little wild vetch. They've typically got like little tendrils in the same way that a pea has. There's, may, there's probably about about 14 types of uh, vetch and this is the common one. But if you were uh, to take a stem and crush it, there is a delicate pea smell. Mm. But the taste is definitely of like fresh peas. Mm. Lovely. Okay, so now we're back at the Epicurean with all the things we've foraged and Richard, you're the sous chef and you've come mm -hmm. to join us. Um, what ideas do you have? Um, yeah, so what you've come back with here is you've got some, some haws, um, some rose hips, vetch, um, some blackberries, sloes, damsons, cob nuts, um, shaggy imp caps and uh, Wood sorrel. Wood sorrel. Yep. So it sounds like we've got some really good ideas for them forage their items. We've almost got an entire meal made up here. Um, starters, we're thinking a mushroom dish, so there'll be a shaggy ink cap. Um, we'll do that with a sourdough toast and a little bit of brown butter breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Possibly finish that off with the vetch and the pea element. Mm -hmm. um, main? Yeah, I was thinking um, the, so the cob nuts with, um, with a bit of uh, wood pigeon. Yep. So um, we were going wood pigeon, um, pearl barley, beetroot, which is kind of banging season at the moment. Um, and it's almost, you know, what the pigeon would be eating sort of yep, thing, like yep. it probably would be foraging itself on some um, cob nuts. And yeah, so... Slows are quite an obvious one. I mean, we, yep. there's not much other that you do there with those apart from uh, slow gin, and that's quite an easy process. Um, good. Yep. Pop them in some gin <coughs> and leave, is it? Freeze them. Um, put them in some gin. It's very good with a bit of star anise or some spice, mm -hmm. cinnamon, a little bit of sugar, and leave it for six months or more. You're going to make a, a rosehip gel, yeah, or a rosehip syrup infusion. Yeah, blitz them up, crush them up with some, and get some water and some sugar, and cook that down, and then yeah. strain that, and then that's that's as simple as that would be. The uh, mushroom that we found, the uh, one of the Belit family, um, this is looking a little bit chewed and a little bit um, tired. So what the best thing? for that really is to slice it and dehydrate it and then we thought for a, the damsons would be a tart sorbet essentially mm -hmm. or, yep. or a frozen granita or something simple like that. Yeah. Okay great, sounds like, um, sounds like we're going to eat well. Yeah, definitely.